It is with great delight to welcome you to the Slum Flower Hour, the domain for disobedient women who date men. <laughs> As the manosphere rises and misogyny sets fervor into our society, we're left with no choice but to beg the question of how will we protect ourselves because the world isn't changing anytime soon and we've tried everything. We've tried being nice girls who don't provoke men. We've tried being obedient girls who make sure to do as we're told in the hopes we'll be rewarded with validation and acceptance from men. We've even tried doing the whole opposite and being the dirty raunchy girls all in aim to please the male gaze and yet nothing has worked. We're still dealing with the same systemic oppression. And so in a world where men are the dominant group, as much as people try to argue about it and say not all men, we still live in a society where men are the dominant group. In that particular world, we have to decide how we are going to make sure that we witness our own happy endings. Unfortunately, there are men out there with massive platforms where their videos are getting millions, if not billions of views. I don't even want to name these men because I don't even want to give them space and reception on my own platform. But you probably know who these men are. <clears throat> One of them, thankfully, has recently been deplatformed from social media, but people are still inviting him onto their podcasts which tells you that there is still a demand and a desire for men like him to have a voice, which is dangerous and quite horrifying when you consider that if millions of people, and I'm talking, these are young men watching these videos of people talking about ways that they can subjugate women, men discussing different tactics to bully women into submission. If these are getting millions of views, those views are coming from real human beings so there are men living in the world right now who are not just absorbing these ideas but are embodying them and a lot of these men are quite young men because it's the younger generation who have access to platforms like TikTok and YouTube where these thought leaders in air quotes because they're only leading people to a ditch of despair but these thought leaders are choosing these platforms to spread this message, to encourage more men to essentially try and dominate women, all rooted in a place of male insecurity. And so when we know that we're sharing a planet with men who harbor, who harbor these thoughts, we can't dismiss the reality that there's a strong chance we're going to come across these men. And a lot of these men are not going to appear as what you have pictured in your mind of what an incel or a miserable man would look like. A lot of these men are successful in their own way. Some of these men are good looking. Many of them, you would never expect it, but again, male insecurity doesn't have a face or a particular appearance. And so when videos like this are getting millions of views and people are thinking in this way, and you don't know if you're coming across a guy who harbors this mentality, all you can do is create a robust, a strong <laughs> and a safe mental framework that will allow you to not just be able to identify these men, but safely walk away with your dignity and your joy intact because the design of this entire structure in this manosphere is to break you down into little pieces. And what's ironic is that these men won't go and target the women that are dying to be picked, who are molding and bending themselves into all the shapes that men have assigned to us. No, they prefer to target women like us, who are strong-willed, who are brave, and who have a very solid sense of self because there is huge satisfaction in breaking someone down who was once really strong. And that's why there is a lot at stake. And through this podcast, I want to encourage women who are my main listeners to get wiser and realize that the world isn't going to change just because you want it to change. And as much as we like to discuss the idea that you shouldn't have to change yourself for anyone. And of course, I agree with that ideology. But having said that, 
in a world that is not going to adapt to our needs anytime soon, we need to make some internal changes to be able to survive this world. So I am asking you to join me on the Slumflower Hour to discuss the things that your homegirl is sick of hearing at 1am. I know, I know, we've all been there where you call your friend or you text her or you overload her with voice notes about this same guy who you swore you was going to block <laughs> or something just isn't sitting well with you and the only way for you to unpack those thoughts is to call your friend and ask her what do you think of this and a part of you is secretly hoping that she will validate your wrong decision to go and chase after him and when she tells you you know what I think you should leave this man alone you know you don't listen, you still stay there a little bit longer and you end up facing the consequences. With the Slumflower Hour, I want you to be able to not just hear from somebody who is putting these different responses into action, but I also want to encourage you to witness my freedom and allow you to feel inspired to pursue your own freedom in a way that's authentic to you. That's the most important thing here, having an authentic response to a world that has been designed to bully you into being smaller. Together, <laughs> we will fix the fixation we have with being the good girl because it does not work. And if it would have worked, then it should have worked by now. We've tried everything. Clearly, a change needs to happen. And as the world gets worse... We're witnessing climate change. We're living through a recession. We're watching the manosphere grow. And if you don't know what the manosphere is, it's basically like an ideology that incels have pushed. And unfortunately, it is becoming the dominant way that a lot of young men are approaching the way that they view and interact with women. We can't afford to just like keep babying men through it because they're making decisions. And while some people might argue that there are good men, well, I think the problem is we are so obsessed with good personhood, especially as women, that we refuse to acknowledge that being a good person, in quotation marks, will not protect you from a system that is inherently designed to be destructive. Also, men know that you have an obsession with being seen as pure and good. How do they know? Because they designed the system that you are living within the parameters of. So with that being said, if men know that you desire being seen as a good person, what are they going to do? They're going to take advantage of that. They are going to monopolize your obsession with being seen as a good person and they're going to make you feel bad for not upholding the idea of being a good woman. And what happens when you feel bad? You're motivated by guilt. And when you're motivated by guilt, you're putting someone else's feelings above your own. And the only way for patriarchy to survive is if we keep on feeding it with our empathy, with our nurturing, with our enthusiastic desire to be seen as nice. But I just want to know what has being nice done for us so far, because clearly it hasn't worked. And having said all that, I'm not saying that we need to get our pitchforks out and revolt. What I am saying <laughs> is that the nice girl syndrome has got to go. Got to leave that behind now. It's okay. Mourn the girl you were who was a people pleaser. Let her go and allow her to sit with the generation of women who came before us who are also people pleasers because all of them are watching us and hoping that we will allow it to just click in our minds. <laughs> I bet you there is an ancestor out there that is clapping for you the moment you decide to know your worth and act on it. I promise you. And so watching women generation after generation giving away their power and putting their happiness in the hands of men has rendered me tired and I want to do something about it. And as much as there are many ways to approach resisting oppression there isn't a perfect way but I do think that a conversation is always a really powerful start and in a world where men have 
designed patriarchy to keep us reliant on their attention, to keep us reliant on the promise of intimacy, what would the world look like if we decided to remove those two things from the pedestal and replace that pedestal with us instead? Like, what would the world look like if we stopped living for male intention and started just living for our own desires instead? Because personally for me, I'm curious to see how the world would spin if we knew our worth and actually acted on it. Because there's a lot of talk and a lot of conversation about standing up, standing tall, knowing your power, speaking up for others, ask for that pay raise, move out, go and find your own independence. But then when it comes to deciding that you have certain values and standards, there is always this sort of lack of symmetry when it comes to how that reflects in your real life. Like, are you actually making decisions that reflect the worth you see in yourself? I know for most women, the answer is gonna be no, because if the answer was yes, then your life would look dramatically different, wouldn't it? And this is not even a drag. I'm just saying that men would have no choice but to acts differently if we acted differently. And this isn't to blame women or to imply that women are responsible for men's behavior. Rather, this is to remind you that you have power even when you think you don't. And the whole reason that men have to subjugate us is because we have power. You wouldn't subjugate something that isn't powerful in the first place. You wouldn't suppress something that has the power to rise in the first place. Now, would you? Hmm? <laughs> Um, I think another thing for me is that we give men so much power. We give them the power to dominate us. And it comes at a cost, especially because most men are spiritually and emotionally bankrupt and they will suck you dry and feel no way about it. And I've met many women who have gone through this repeatedly where guy after guy, it's the same problem, just in a different outfit and a different haircut. And it's like, well, when is it going to change? And you find yourself at this crossroads of despair where you're thinking, do I pay attention to this new guy who's interested in me? But what if he's like the last guy? And am I dating this new guy because I'm trying to get over the previous guy? And then now that I'm dating this new guy, he's reminding me of the previous guy. So now I need to leave this new guy and then meet another new guy who will allow me to get over the previous new guy. And then your dating life just becomes a cycle of getting over men. <laughs> like is that what you want for your life because I can't lie all in all you can't help who you're attracted to because if we had a choice <laughs> over our sexuality would we really be dating straight men because <laughs> right now it feels like we're all at this invisible gunpoint I'm not gonna lie <laughs> till this day I remain confused as to why I remain attracted to men because each day, the reasons I'm drawn to them dwindles more and more and more. I'm still here. <laughs> and the fact that I'm still here means that, you know, there's always going to be something to unpack. There's always going to be something to discuss. There's always going to be something new to dive into and try and understand. And I think men are a great opportunity to look into yourself because we are all mirrors to each other, right? Um, so whilst we can sit here and discuss all the ways we need to get ourselves stronger emotionally and smarter mentally. It's, I guess, a time where nothing matters more than taking care of yourself. And ultimately, the goal is that through this podcast, you will be equipped with the ability to have stronger discernment. And as the men like to say, pick better men <laughs> but yes you will have the discernment to be able to pick better men because not all men are bad right <laughs>